Have you located it yet? How much time do we have until it closes? Okay, well, we're just gonna have to risk it. Is that including the defrag? Okay. What about the status on the capacitor bank? 89%. We'll have to make that work. Just no more time. We're losing sectors fast. It's gonna have brain damage. Oh, it's uh, blue screening already. We don't have much time. You got that yet? Perfect. Let's do it. Please don't be your new voice. Was this really five years ago? Wow. I think it's time for Mark II. Listen, your standard build goes like this. Define your conditions. You've got some idea? but where to start? Step one, get rid of this annoying pole. It's a tiny bit easier when you're trying to improve an old design. Still kinda works. But that still doesn't make it simple. Break it down into smaller tasks. The major problem here is that the projector has to be a certain distance away from the mask to cover the whole thing. Mirrors? Then you have to deal with weird focusing and skewing issues. Remember, make solutions, not problems. Search online for things that might make your life easier. Laser projector? This was really promising, but it has an issue where if you just lightly tap it, it resets. Realize the hours and hours you've put into brainstorming was all for nothing and it's never going to work and you might as well just give up now. Work on something else. Wait, I've got it, of course. Or not. Forget how you felt the day you destroyed everything. Remember that your brain only solves things that you're not currently working on. Remember the Pixel Pixel? It's a tiny addressable LED matrix I made years ago. I was thinking, what if I made every panel of the mask its own LED matrix? Irrationally order 9,000 LEDs on Alibaba, reinforcing the assumption in your brain that this is all going to work out. There's still one problem with this plan though. I can tell this mask has too many faucets, angles, and faces to really make this work. S-E-A. Simplify everything always. Also the first three letters of my name. Search for inspiration. I remember this cool mask maker named Wintercroft. I wonder if they have anything. Find inspiration. Steal inspiration. Just kidding, I got permission. Spend hours and hours making said inspiration work with your design. It's never as simple as you think. Get frustrated. Delete Fusion 3. Take a break. Work through the frustration. Okay, done. I mean, it looks like a mask, but does it actually mask? It would be silly to not 3D print this to see if it fits. Imagine all that work, and I can't even wear it. By the way, I think I just rediscovered my love for 3D printing. This machine just works. Anyway, does it fit? Fits. This is where the real work starts. Flatten the parts. Create a panel. Import into KiCad. Fix all the errors. Design the schematic. Import components. Copy. Paste. Copy. Paste. Copy. Paste. What? What the hell?
follow the black rabbit. You have a package. Oh! Ow! Did you have to drop that on me? Like, it's really heavy. What is this anyway? Who delivered it? Cool. Cool indeed. This is the home stretch. For some reason, I always feel nervous when I apply the solder paste. It's like I'm not sure if everything is ready because once you spread it on, the clock's ticking. Pick in place. Did you think I was going to apply 3000 LEDs by hand? The trusty $20 toaster oven. Reflowing $500 worth of parts. Before I go cracking these boards apart, I need to check each panel to see if it's working properly. It's way easier to fix a bad solder joint when it's in a panel like this. Now let's do it all over again. I'm about to do something extremely terrifying. Belt grinder meets circuit boards. Okay, you see these tabs? The way I'm going to mount them together is by soldering them together like this at whatever angle they need to be. I've never soldered in 3D before. I tried this on a test piece before putting the LEDs on and it held together pretty well before I dropped it on the floor that is. I was a little nervous making these connections. One wrong move could rip the pad right off the board. And if that happens, it's game over. It's much more structurally sound when it's one piece, but getting to that point is no easy task. All right, we got both halves. Check this out. Oh yeah. Line them up. Add flux. Solder. Connect the dots with tiny wires. It's a bit tedious. So after all this time and all this work, was it really worth it? You tell me. I've been so focused on the build of the mask and worried that if it's gonna work or not that the controller was basically an afterthought. So I threw together these two different ways of controlling it with components I had just laying around. This box contains a high current Palulu 5 volt step down regulator and a board called a Pixel Blaze. The Pixel Blaze is a really cool and convenient addressable LED controller. It lets you map and control your addressable LEDs really easily. The mapping part is important because the mask has a really strange arrangement of the LEDs. So what this software allows you to do is assign the LED to the correct XY position on where it should be on the mask. So for example, on a regular LED matrix, this is always LED 1 and this one's always LED 16. But if we imagine the mask is split in the middle here, this could be LED 1 and this could be LED 200 and something. This is because each one of these is its own matrix. So I added this belt hook, this giant 3S battery, and I'm ready for nine hours of face warming goodness. But there's one problem with the Pixel Blaze, and that it's not easy to display images and videos on it, which is somewhat of a necessity. 
That's where the Raspberry Pi comes in. As a test, I connected just a standard logic level so I could control the LEDs with the Raspberry Pi. Actually, this is the one I ripped off the Christmas tree of death. I use Google Sheets to map the locations of the LEDs. If you imagine this whole thing as a grid, this is half the mask. Then this is actually LED 00, zero in position, but there's no LED there, so you can't call that LED, obviously. So then the first LED right here is actually at 0, 04, or 40, I should say. So then you have to map them in order, but if you want to call LED, whatever this is, T, let's call it T2, then you actually have to call LED 275. I also created a Python script that correctly maps the pixels of a video file to the mask. It runs at about eight frames per second, which is good enough. Do you want a more detailed deep dive into all this? I was thinking of throwing something up on my second channel, so if you do, Maybe say something in your comment and also go give that channel a sub too. So the mask still needs a dedicated controller, not just something hobbled together. So stay tuned because that's coming soon. But in the meantime, activate global surveillance simulation. You may be asking, why do all this? Why spend so much time just to hide your face behind an overly expensive face heater? What if I told you there was reason to this madness? How are those cameras looking? Enable hostile visual code injection. We're being watched, tracked, followed. Something needs to be done. I don't have all the answers, but I've got some solutions. And we're going to figure it out. One burnt pixel at a time.